Cavalcade of America, presented by DuPont. In bringing you the sweeping, ever-changing panorama of the Cavalcade of America... We have presented tales of heroism and daring in many walks of life and many periods of American history. This evening we bring you a story of songs of the sea and of the men who sang them in the golden age of sail. Palatial liners and fast cargo ships have replaced the Yankee clippers. But even today, men who go down to the sea in modern ships treasure the traditions of the old sailing days. And so it is, too, in science. The traditions of many years of careful, painstaking research and study lie behind the work of the modern research chemist. It is these traditions which have inspired the DuPont Pledge, better things for better living through chemistry. of iron men in wooden ships, the era of the world-famed Yankee Clippers. Out of American port they sailed across the seven seas, around the Horn, to China, Australia, India, thence homeward round the Cape of Good Hope. The lusty shanty songs of clipper ship days told of high adventure and stirred the imagination and ambition of many an American boy. Young John Lawson, bred to the heritage of the sea, was one of these, one of thousands who left home and friends for the stern, hard life at sea. One spring day in the 1850s, young Lawson and his widowed mother drive along New York's cobblestone waterfront where the stately masts of the far-famed clipper ships tower above the host house. Look, Mother, there's the sea witch. Oh, isn't she a beauty? She's loading for the trip around the Horn and up to San Francisco. Let's stop and listen a minute, Mother. Hold on, driver. Oh, boy. Oh. <laughs> Did you hear that? Yes, yes. That's Reuben Ranzo they're singing. They call it a halyard chant. Ranzo, boy, Ranzo. Our love for Reuben Ranzo. Ranzo, boy, Ranzo. Our love for Reuben Ranzo. Ranzo, boy, Ranzo. Ranzo, boy, Ranzo. Go away to the yards and get the dump of spent. We'll show the flying cloud our hill sister. Hey, Wilson, we're sending you Kansas, sir. Listen to him, Mother. They think they can outsail Captain Creasy's flying clouds. Go on, driver. Yep. John, are you sure you want to make this trip with Captain Creasy? You'll be gone so long. Oh, we'll be back in no time, Mother. Only two years. <laughs> two years. Oh, John, those were the very words your father used when he left on his last voyage round the horn. I'm sorry, Mother. If you don't want me to go, I'll... I'll stay. I'll not make the trip. No, John. You're 17 now. You must start living your own life. You must choose your own career. And if your heart's set on following in your father's footsteps, then you must go. Mother. I... I can think of no better beginning for you, John, than to be sailing as an apprentice on the Flying Cloud. Captain Creasy's one of your father's oldest friends. He's stern, but he's just... He's the finest captain in the world. Oh, I'm lucky to get on his ship. There she is, Mother. The Flying Cloud. Yes, sir. Just think. In a few hours, I'll be way up there on a royal yard arm, setting sail. We'll be on our way to all those strange and wonderful places Father used to tell about. Oh, oh boy. Well, here we are. There's Captain Creasy, John. Well, come aboard, Mother, just for a minute. Very well, dear. And mind the step. Thank you. Uh, here, they're already battening down the hatches. But well, we'll be underway on the flood tide. Look lively, lads. Mr. Endicott. Hi, right, Captain. I see they got men off to the sea witch. Aye, the sea witch thinks she'll leave us stewing in her juice. <laughs> Small chance of that, sir. All right, me hearties. Shake the dust of all the York off your feet and get aloft. There'll be an extra nugget for every man if we hold down upon the witch. Look lively. Clear the topsail bunch. Two boat alongside, Captain. Take charge, Mr. Andy. Right, I have visitors coming aboard. 
Let the towboat stand by and we'll give him a line. Well, welcome to the fine cloud, Mrs. Lawson. Thank you, Captain Creasy. Good day, Captain Creasy. Well, here I am and ready for duty, sir. Mother's given her consent. Good lad. Yeah, you've grown to quite a figure of a man since I saw you last. Yeah, if you have half the salt of your father, you'll make a fine seaman, my boy. I hope I will, sir. Well, we'll know that for sure before this voyage is done, lad. I'll be easier in my mind knowing that he's with you, Captain Creasy. Well, he'll have to make his way with the crew. I play no favorites on my ship. But I'll keep a weather eye out for him, Mr. Lawson. Thank you. Oh, don't worry, Mother. I'll be back before you know it. Aye, with lucky and steady winds, we'll drop anchor here again before two years have passed. The witch is letting go our mooring lines, Captain. Yes, right, Captain. The witch is getting underway, sir. Shall we lead her down the bay? Aye. Sure, how fast a good ship can pull her down a night for. Aye, sir. All hatches batten down, sir. Well, you'd best go ashore now, Mother. Goodbye, and don't worry. Goodbye, John. Goodbye, Captain Creasy. Oh, God bless you both, and bless the flying cloud that she may bring you safely back. Goodbye, ma'am. God rest you. Help your mother ashore, Lawson, and report to the boat. Aye, sir. Come on, Mother. I don't want to miss going aloft as we set sail. Bless you, John. Do your work well now that you've chosen. I'll be watching from the shore, and I'll be proud... Oh, proud. Oh, mother. Mm. Only, only come back. Come back. Goodbye. I, I'll be back. Well, gladly, Lawson. You're a seaman now. Aye, sir. Goodbye, mother. No, 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 Fasher. Let her go, then. Oh, kisser. And so out of old New York with the crew singing the old shanty Hall the Bolin, the Queen of the Yankee Clippers sailed, soon leaving the Sea Witch far astern. Young John Lawson, like many another adventurous American boy with the call of the sea in his blood, settled down to his duties as seaman of a full-rigged ship. Up on the 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 squall-whipped yard, landlubber John Lawson passed the test of a seaman of clipper ship days. But he was not accepted by his mates as a full-fledged sailor until he had crossed the line. As the flying cloud neared the equator... Lawson is called upon to undergo the traditional ceremony of King Neptune's court, which changes a young landlubber into an old salt. Uh, man. Hey, where's old King Nep? Uh, he's out over the bow, putting on them rope whiskers ahead. <laughs> Here he comes. Throw me down if old Nate the carpenter don't look like he's come up out of the sea, sure enough. Now, <laughs> <laughs> fast, you lovers of ass. You're in the presence of King Neptune. And if you don't so your cab, I'll fork you into Davy Jones' locker. <laughs> Where's the landlubber, the flying clouds, polluted with this boy? Lawson. John Lawson. Bring out Lawson, Lawson. Aye. Come on, Lawson. Get forward to the throne of Neptune. But which, which way, sir? I, I can't see with this blindfold. You've no need to see. Down on your hands and knees. Oh, oh, oh you lover. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Enough, enough. Drop anchor where you are, lover. Aye. Let the candidate be washed of all the dirt of the land he's dared bring into my domain. Are you ready, barber? Aye, Neptune. The scrub brush and deck soap is ready. Wash him down. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Rub him till it shines. Aye, Neptune. Very hard! <laughs> Enough. <clears throat> now let him be tossed in the tank. And he'll be fit company for true sons of the sea. All right. Grab him. In the tank with him. Hey, lads. Yeah. Fish him out. And bring him before my throne. That I may bestow upon him the rights and honors of the sea. All right. Lend hand, lads. Hoist away. He... Oh. Take off the blindfold. <coughs> for he's now one of you. <coughs> and now hear me, Neptune's heart. We, Neptune, monarch of the sea, all oceans and navigable waters, have this day held court aboard the flying cloud, and do now admit into our realm John Lawson, 
and finding him upon examination to be a worthy and suitable candidate, we have therefore duly initiated him with all the ancient rites and ceremonies into the grand order of the sons of Neptune, and hereby bestow upon him the rights and privileges of passing freely and without let or hindrance through our dominions and partings from the northern to the southern hemisphere. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And now, to prove you're a true son of Neptune, let's see what you've learned in the forecastle in the way of singing. I command you to lead off in blow the man down high and blow him high. I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea. To my eye, I, I blow the man down. And trust that you'll join in the chorus with me. Give me some time to blow the man down. There was an old skipper, I don't know his name. To my eye, I blow the man down. Although he once played a remarkable game. Give me some time to blow the man down. If they be found in the tropical seas To my eye, I blow the man down And he whistled all day but in vain for a breeze Give me some time to blow the man down I'll sing you a song, a good song of the sea To my eye, I blow the man down And trust that you'll join in the chorus with me Give me some time to blow the man down the line, southward to the roaring forties, down to the bottom of the world, where the storm-lashed horn ever challenged men and ships. With the dreaded Cape Horn behind them and the vast Pacific for them, the crews of the clipper ships spent long tropical days in the routine duties of the ship. Through storm and calm, they worked their way northward toward San Francisco, where they would turn westward to China. Aboard the swift flying cloud, John Lawson, now a seaman with months of service before the mast, goes along with the best of them takes his turn at the wheel and stands the dark hours of the dog watch when on hot tropic nights the crew gathered on the foredeck, swapping salty tales, talking of strange, fantastic lambs and of home, singing the songs that helped to pass the crawling hours and days and months. jolly song, and the lungs to see it through. Give us a tune while you stand the dog watch. Yeah, well, let's hear the landlubber and squeak giving imitation of a man. If I wasn't standing watch, I'd give you a more convincing imitation, Buckley. <laughs> I'll pin you to the deck any time you name. Listen to who's speaking up. It's a good thing you're standing watch or I'd mop the deck with you. Oh, oh Corrigan. Oh, I got... Did you hear? Uh, I got... <laughs> Well, stand watch for Lawson. Uh, you're off duty, Lawson, and I'll be busy for a spell taking a set from the quarter deck. Thank you, Captain. All right, Buckley, stand up. I'm ready to give you that imitation. All right, you landlubbing swab. I've been waiting to trim your sail. Yeah, reach your own sail, sailor. You're heading into a squall. Wave the 
got breath of life out of you, lad. You'll think a polar bear's got you. I won't have to squeeze the breath out of you if you don't stop boasting and do something. Get on your pins and shake hands with a real man, Buckley. I, I was downed, and I'm not ashamed to admit it. I'll take back what I said, lad. Will you shake on it? I will. If you'll take up that wheezy old music box of yours and leave us in the shanty. Done, lad, done. Call the tune. And we'll show them sailors can both fight and sing. <laughs> Give us the stormy wind to blow. Aye, the wind to blow. For the raging seas to roar. hundred day voyages of the clipper ships from New York to San Francisco, many a boy was turned into a man. But San Francisco was only the first port of call on voyages girdling the globe. Out of the Golden Gate, westward toward Asia, the clipper ships sailed to take on their precious cargoes of tea. Shanghai was the crossroads of the east and a dangerous city for an adventurous young sailor to explore alone. An able-bodied seaman brought a high price when Shanghai. There were merchants who dealt in sailors as well as tea and jade. Into one of these shops, young John Lawson wanders. The night the flying cloud was to sail for home. Ah, welcome, American sailor. Welcome to poor shop of Lee Fu. Uh, thanks, but what's the idea of having your man close the door to the street? The sun has gone. The time has come to trade no more. But I will savvy. But first, you will honor my shop by taking tea with me. It is the custom. Oh, uh, thanks just the same, but uh, I'm in a hurry. I want a piece of jade to take home to my mother. My ship sails on the next tide. No, American sailor. The ship you sail on does not leave till the sun comes. The gift to honorable mother must wait. Hey, look here, you old devil. What are you up to? Either you sell me a piece of jade here or now, or I'll go somewhere else. No. Magasera does not leave shop of Lee Fu until he has tasted of the tea of Lee Fu. Oh, is that so? Well, I'd like to see you stop me. Oh, so that's it. I've heard about your kind. Now I know your real business. Shanghai and sailors, not selling jade. What men will buy, the wise matter sells. Well, I'm one piece of merchandise you won't sell. Listen. Oh, mates of the flying cloud! Clear the deck for action! That's you, Orson. Aye! Stand by a minute! All right, Lee Fool. It's your move. You open that door, then my friends have to break it down and wreck your place. Lee Fool knows well when the wheels of fortune turn against him. Hold on, now. There. The door is open. Come on in, lads. American sailor, come to buy jade. Look. Have here a very fine jade for Annabelle Muller. Oh, no, thank you, Lee Foo. We'll buy our jade somewhere else. Come on, let's get back to the ship. We thought you were in trouble this What's up, Lawson? Captain sent me ashore to look for you. Thought you might have been Shanghai. Yeah, I thought so, too, until I heard your shanty. Well, I'll be blowed. Come on, lads. 
Let's go back and teach our old heathen a lesson. Ah, forget it. Forget it. I've got a better idea. Let's finish that shanty that saved my life. Well, there is a good idea. Our anchor we'll weigh and our sails we will set. Goodbye, fare ye well. Goodbye, fare ye well. The friends we are leaving we leave with regret. For all my boys, we're homeward bound. We're homeward bound, oh joyful sound. Goodbye, fare ye well. Goodbye, fare ye well. Come rally the captain and run quick around. For all my boys, we're homeward bound. We're homeward bound, you heard us say. Goodbye, fare ye well. Goodbye, fare ye well. Go down a cat ball and come Homeward bound. That was a cry that gladdened the heart of seamen. Though a year, even two years, might pass before their ships dropped anchor in the home port again, the very fact that they were going homeward was enough. Homeward bound with a flying cloud went young John Lawson, past Singapore, across the Indian Ocean, around the tip of Africa, and up the South Atlantic, until at last, two years after the boys set sail, a stalwart young man comes back to old New York town. And as a fussy towboat warps the flying cloud to her pier, John Lawson sees his mother on the shore. Mr. Lawson? Aye, sir. You can leave the wheel. Voyage is over. Ah. And unless my eyes have gone back on me, I think you'll find your mother waiting at the foot of the gangplank. Uh, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. I can see her on the wharf. Make fast the boat, Greg. Aye, sir. Oh, the gangplank. Your permission to leave the ship, Lawson. You've done well. And if you're reminded to go out again, there'll be a better post waiting you on board the flying cloud. Thank you, sir. I'll be with you when you put to sea again. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, for the scattered waters rave and the winds are rebel seas. Back an eagle cage that pines on his own unchanging shore. Oh, give me the flashing grime, the spray and the tempest roar. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, for the scattered waters rave and the winds are rebel skeet. A life on the ocean wave, a home on the rolling deep, for the scattered waters rave and the winds are rebel skeet. In honor of the American seamen and American ships that carry on the proud heritage of the Clipper days, Don Voorhees and his cavalcade orchestra play the stirring modern song of the sea, Hank Away.
days of sail and the clipper ships are but a glorious memory. Steel and steam have taken the place of merchantmen of wood and sail. But American youth still goes down to the sea in ships. Freighters flying the stars and stripes still plow the seven seas and swift American liners ply the shipping lanes around the world. Brave leaders in the cavalcade of America. For some people, the term chemistry conjures up mental pictures of vats full of fuming liquids and laboratories filled with weird apparatus where pale-faced scientists pull new products out of a test tube like rabbits out of a hat. The chemical industry does produce great quantities of so-called heavy chemicals. And these are used by more than a hundred important industries. But it also produces a variety of finished articles, products that you use every day. Paint, toilet articles radiator antifreezes, automobile waxes and polishes, cleaning fluid, and scores of others. And working hand-in-hand, the factory and the research laboratory combine to reduce the cost of chemical products so that more people may enjoy them. Let's take an example of how the chemical industry, aided by research, serves you and your family. Everyone is familiar with the transparent cellulose film which DuPont manufactures and sells under the trademark cellophane. The modern housewife knows how this sparkling material protects the packaged foods her family uses every day. She also prefers sheets and undergarments and similar personal things she buys in the stores wrapped in cellophane, for it protects such articles so well they do not need to be washed before using. When DuPont first introduced cellophane cellulose film in 1924, its cost limited its use to only a few products such as perfumes and fancy candy. But as the use of cellophane spread throughout many industries, DuPont steadily reduced prices. In fact, prices have been lowered 18 times in 12 years. The American public has benefited materially from these savings because each year more and more manufacturers have been able to send their products into our homes fresh and clean in cellophane. Today, the wide use of cellophane throughout the country is a tribute to this price reduction record, which is outstanding in American business. This is but one example, which shows how the chemical industry, coupled with scientific research, reduces cost and improves quality, thus providing, as DuPont expresses it, better things for better living through chemistry. Elizabeth Blackwell, pioneer woman physician and her struggle for the recognition of woman's place in the medical profession will be the subject of our broadcast when next week at the same time DuPont again presents The Cavalcade of America. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.